Working in corrections is a dangerous business. You know, you've got people who are, who are violent and people who steal and people who do bad things to people and hurt people, and you don't want that to keep continuing. So it's very important that you get corrections correct and that you get it right. So what we want to look at today is this role of prison chaplains, and as uh, Dr. Delulio said, volunteers, all the volunteers that the chaplains coordinate and work with, have they a role in getting it right in corrections? And just to give you an image, just to begin with, what's this thing called a prison chaplain? So let me give you a story about a, a, a prison chaplain, and her name is Kelly. And what does Kelly look like? Well, she's educated. She got her master's in divinity from Harvard, and she is satisfied with her job like these prison chaplains. She's very happy in the work that she's doing. And she's white, and she's from the United Methodist tradition. And she's very gifted and skilled in working with people. So she's walking around the prison where she works. It's a maximum security prison in Salem, Oregon, and there's 2,400 men in that prison for all sorts of things. It includes a death row. So what Kelly does around, when she comes to work, she's happy in her work, and she's kind of bright, and she's very gifted, as I said, with talking with people. So she's working with staff. She's interacting with staff in the death row, in the segregation unit, in the chapel, in the education unit, on the floor, in the, um, in the rec room. All over the prison, you'll find Kelly. And as she's going along, she's talking with, like the chaplains in this study, they say they have huge amount of contact with the inmates. There's a huge amount of personal contact going on with the inmates. So Kelly might have a conversation with John, who is trying to make sense of the world. He might be in prison for a long time. Maybe he's committed a murder. And John is just trying to make sense of the world, and how does he cope with this life sentence that he's got in prison. And his way of making sense out of that is true education or something like that. He's not particularly religious. He's not spiritual. He's what you might call a humanist way of making meaning. So he approaches things from humanity, and that's what Kelly works with to support that and work with that. Then Kelly might work with Frank, and Frank is not religious either, he's, but he's not humanist. He's much more spiritual. So Frank might like to go to the Native American sweat lodge, and he likes to sweat in there because he has traditions and links to the Native American heritage. And Kelly will support that spirituality. It's a way of life. It's not a religion as such, but it's a definite spirituality. And then she'll work with um, uh, Brian. And Brian is religious, and Patty, and Sean, and they're religious. And Patty is a Catholic, and Sean is a Muslim, and um, Barry is a Buddhist. So you have this amazing diversity going on in prisons. And you've got all these different ways of making meaning. You've got humanist, spiritual, and religious ways of making meaning. And that's what chaplains are good at because they're trained, and we've learned from this study that not only are they educated, but they're trained in clinical pastoral education the best source of training that we know to help people go beyond their own tradition and help people from wherever they're coming from to grow in making meaning. Now the question about that making meaning, does that add anything to corrections? Is that anything to do with evidence base? We want to get corrections right, so we want what we're looking for is a more compassionate, more effective, and less costly prison system. So does Kelly's work with those three men have anything to add to that? Well, it turns out that the American Psychological Association did a study, a meta-analysis, no doubt. Not just one study, but they looked at a whole bunch of studies to see what happens when psychologists and therapists pay attention to a person's way of making meaning in their therapy. Even if the psychologist is an atheist and works with somebody who's religious in therapy and brings that religious background into that therapy, what happens is you get better psychological outcomes and you get better spiritual outcomes. So the APA has named it a, a, an evidence-based practice for therapists to reach out into the person's way of making meaning, whatever it is, humanist, spiritual, or religious, and bring that into therapy. So this is what the chaplains are doing. They're reaching out and they're bringing that into the correctional process. And as Dr. DeLulio said, there's no one better able to do that than the chaplains.